the stars are right and that means it's time for another episode of the whisper in darkness i'm your host the man from ling thank you very much for joining me today on this episode we are taking another look at lily chen the mystic investigator who will be released in uh, edge of the earth uh, one of two deluxe expansions i guess that will be released for the arkham horror lcg later this year ffg was kind enough to spoil uh, lily's signature cards as well as her weakness so we are going to do a little bit of theory crafting on today's episode and uh, take a look at a deck and uh, play a game uh, with Lily and uh, see how she fares. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these playthroughs. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. FFG spoiled Lily Chen, at least two of uh, her four disciplines and her uh, signature weakness in their preview article for Edge of the Earth uh, Investigator expansion uh, last week. So we're going to do a little bit of theory crafting today. Take a look at a Lily Chen deck that I built and uh, see how it fares against uh, good old Blood on the Altar, one of my uh, favorite scenarios to play. Now, uh, Lily, uh, if you uh, want a little bit more background on Lily, uh, head over to my preview of Edge of the Earth Part 2, where I take a look at the investigators, uh, Lily as well as uh, Norman Withers. Now, while FFG spoiled Lily's uh, signature, two of her signature cards as well as her signature weakness, it did not uh, spoil her deck building restrictions. However, uh, the article strongly hinted that her deck building restrictions would be similar to those of Norman Withers. Now, if you remember, Norman can take uh, level zero seeker cards. He can take up to five level zero mystic cards, and then he can take uh, mystic cards level uh, one to five. So if Lily is uh, the same as Norman, she, I expect her to have... Uh, uh, She'll be able to take Mystic cards, level 0, 5 Guardian cards, uh, level 0, and then Guardian cards, level 1 to 5. So uh, we do not know her deck building restrictions, so take uh, this, uh, this video with a, a grain of salt. I think it's probably correct, but uh, we, uh, we don't know uh, exactly what her deck res building restric restrictions are going to be. Nevertheless, I sat down and uh, played around with a few uh, iterations of a uh, of a Lily Chen deck. I focused on uh, her discipline, Balance of the Body, since it is uh, of the two that were spoiled. Uh, Spirit of Harmony and Balance of the Body. Uh, Balance of Body is uh, the far more interesting one. Again, it provides the plus one agility, and then uh, when you trigger it, you can take an action to uh, take three different fight actions and then flip it. So uh, as I was building uh, this Lily Chen deck, I, uh, it was uh, actually quite an interesting thought experiment. Uh, there are an awful lot of Guardian cards that uh, fit very nicely in a Lily Chen deck, uh, given that she is a mystic who uh, wants to punch and kick things. But uh, she's only allowed to have five, probably only allowed to have five Guardian cards, which uh, makes it uh, some tough choices when you sit down to uh, to actually build a deck. Now, this deck that I have built is a, I believe there are eight experience points uh, in it. I did not build a level zero version because I did want to play against Blood on the Altar to see how she fared against uh, good old uh, the boss in the uh, at the end of this scenario. So I ended up with going with uh, assets. I have one copy of Bandolier. That's in there to uh, enable Lily to use uh, the Dragon Pole and Enchanted Blade 3 together. Uh, it's not quite enough just to have uh, either Enchanted Blade or the Dragon Pole, I think. Uh, we've got Clairvoyance. That is to help Lily uh, discover clues. Lily only has two intellect, so it's uh, not great uh, as far as clue gathering goes. So Clairvoyance will help in that. The ally slot was particularly challenging. Uh, we'll take a look a little bit, uh, a closer look at that in a moment, but I ended up deciding to go with David Renfield, largely for the uh, resource generation and the plus one willpower. Of course, we've got the dragon pole in there that was spoiled in the preview article. Gives Lily an additional uh, arcane slot, 
as well as uh, uh, attack and damage bonuses if those uh, arcane slots are filled. Decided to uh, upgrade to Enchanted Blade 3. This, of course, is the Guardian card. I, uh, I assume Lily won't be able to take any high-level Mystic cards. So uh, Enchanted Blade is a nice fit for Lily. It does take up a hand slot, uh, but it also takes up an arcane slot, which uh, would work nicely with the Dragon Pole. Unfortunately, the Dragon Pole requires two hands, so it uh, leads to a little bit of awkwardness because uh, you want to be able to play the both, which uh, necessitates Bandolier. But if we can get say both enchanted blades down i think triggering uh balance of body will be okay so we'll see how it how it works in in practice uh, we've got one copy of right of seeking in there again more uh, help to discover clues as well as two copies of sixth sense so ideally we can get the dragon pull down and then we can fill up uh two of Lily's arcane slots with cards like Clairvoyance, Rite of Seeking, and Sixth Sense, and then uh, go from there and uh, have the attack and damage bonuses with the, uh, with the Dragon Pole, as well as the ability to discover clues, which is uh, sorely lacking uh, with her two intellect. As far as events go, I went with uh, two copies of One Two Punch from the uh, Nathaniel Cho starter deck. It uh, gives you another way of... Uh, of fighting and it gives you two fight actions so uh, when you trigger balance of body you can go from uh, three fight actions to four uh, we've got two copies of sweet Ping kick one that card was spoiled in the preview article again gives you uh, another way of uh, fighting uh, different fight action for balance of the body and uh, as well gives you that auto evade uh, at the end if necessary Went with two copies of Encage the Soul. I was a little bit worried about the resource uh, curve on this deck. There's a lot of expensive assets that need to be paid for, hence uh, David Renfield, as well as uh, Uncage the Soul to help pay for some of those uh, spells that uh, Lily is going to be slinging. Lots of skills in uh, this deck. Uh, I went with uh, two copies of Guts. That will certainly help Lily uh, in gather clues. We've got... Uh, Two copies of Overpower to help her fight. Two copies of Perception, uh, just in case we we end up without having uh, spells to be able to use or we run short. Two copies of Promise of Power. Of course, the uh, that's four uh, wild skill icons from the Innsmouth Conspiracy expansion. Of course, we'll have to add a couple of curse tokens, but uh, that's okay. Uh, two copies of Unexpected Courage and, of course, Vicious Blow. So our five... Our five Guardian cards, uh, level zero Guardian cards, are the one copy of the Bandolier, two copies of Vicious Blow, and two copies of One Two Punch. Now, I would have loved to have had uh, chosen a card like Leadership, the uh, the Guardian skill that lets you uh, boost your uh, uh, willpower and combat skill icons based on uh, how much health and sanity you have left, but... Uh, Again, that takes up, if you get two copies of that, that takes up two of your five slots, assuming her deck building restrictions are anything like Norman's. And so, yeah, there are some very difficult choices to make, uh, especially at level zero. Let's start off by taking a look at the ally slot. I, I really struggled to find an ally that I felt really uh, suited uh, what I was going for with, uh, with Lily Chen. Uh, again, the Guardian Allies, picking two of those at uh, two level zero Guardian Allies is quite a commitment, considering you only have uh, possibly five slots to work with. Uh, Alice Luxley, Beat Cop, um, don't really work particularly well with Lily. Uh, again, the Beat Cop, Beat Cop level zero isn't that great. Uh, Beat Cop level two is much better. Uh, Alice doesn't really work. Uh, Greta Wagner, she would be uh, an interesting option, I think. She does give you that plus one combat skill, uh, as well as a way to discover clues. But I think I should be okay by committing my arcane slots to uh, cards like uh, Clairvoyance, Sixth Sense, and Rite of Seeking. So initially I had her in the deck and uh, decided to, uh, to pull her in favor of a mystic uh, ally in order to give myself... A little bit more flexibility. Uh, Guard Dog, a, a good ally, but I don't think it fits particularly well here. Tetsuo Mori, 
you know, Lily isn't really using a lot of items. She does use the Dragon Pole and a, a couple copies of Enchanted Blade in this deck, but uh, I don't think he does enough to, to justify two slots here. And of course, Venture um, doesn't really uh, have any uh, application in a Lily deck uh, right now. So that leaves us, if you're not going to go with a Guardian ally at level zero, that leaves the uh, the Mystic allies. And uh, again, a, a bit of a tough choice here. Uh, we've got Alyssa Graham. Uh, she gives plus one intellect, but of course we're going to be uh, primarily using our spells to uh, to investigate with, so uh, not particularly helpful. Arcane Initiate was uh, in the running for quite a while. The ability to search your deck for a spell and get it down on the table would help a great deal. Uh, I could see some Lily builds foregoing some of the, uh, at least in solo, uh, foregoing some of the Investigate tech and uh, using cards like Shriveling, another way to... Uh, uh, another fight action that you could use in combination with balance of body. So having Arcane Initiate on the table to be able to to search up those spells and uh, get them into your hands so you can play them would be quite helpful. Uh, David Renfield is uh, always useful uh, between the plus one willpower that will help with the intellect skill tests uh, or the uh, willpower skill tests while investigating as well as the resource generation uh, that is a, a huge boon to this deck that has a lot of expensive assets. So I think uh, that's ended. That's why I ended up going with him. Familiar Spirit is an interesting choice uh, from the Jacqueline Fine starter deck. It uh, provides an extra arcane slot, of course, which uh, Lily could certainly use to power up her Dragon Pole. If you were able to fill uh, between the Dragon Pole and a Familiar Spirit, you get two extra arcane slots. Uh, for a total of four, so if Lily wanted to pack a whole bunch of different uh, spell assets into those arcane slots, she could get her dragon pole up to plus four uh, combat and uh, and uh, plus one damage. Uh, I decided not to go with the familiar spirit familiar spirit in this one uh, simply because I felt besides the extra arcane slot. Um, it doesn't really do very much. It's only got one health and one sanity, so it, it's uh, you can't really soak anything with it because as soon as it takes a damage or a horror, it's it's gone. So I could see uh, Lily builds uh, experimenting with Familiar Spirit to see how high they can get their uh, how many arcane slots they can uh, they can get. Of course. Uh, you've got to fill a lot of those arcane slots as well, which uh, that is uh, also tricky. And finally, we end up with uh, Olive McBride. Uh, you know, Olive is a usually a uh, an ally that's used in uh, in chaos bag manipulation. Uh, investigators like Jim Culver, uh, Father Mateo likes her. Uh, I don't think she really fits within uh, within Lily uh, builds. But uh, who knows? We'll see. We'll uh, we'll have to wait and see what uh, what comes out in the Edge of the Earth expansion. Perhaps there is an ally in uh, in the player among the player cards in that expansion that will uh, work perfectly uh, with Lily. That brings us to the uh, arcane slots again. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be using the Dragon Pole, we want to be able to fill up at least two of those arcane slots in order to use. Uh, in order to get the bonus damage from the dragon pole and again here enchanted blade really stands out because it does uh, it gives lily another weapon that she can use to trigger balance of body and fills an arcane slot so you're almost double dipping there but uh, again it doesn't it conflicts with dragon pole because dragon pole requires two hand slots as uh, and enchanted blade requires one so that sort of necessitates uh the need for uh for bandolier we'll see if it works i'm not entirely sure it will but uh again this is just uh this is all theory crafting at this point we have no idea uh really what lily what a lily chen deck will look like until the expansion is released but it's uh, nice to play around a little bit and see what we can do uh arcane slots again i think here you've really got the choice of i mean you've got various uh i think at this point three uh, different triads you can go with You've got the uh, the the curse one with Armageddon, Eye of Chaos, and Shroud of Shadows. 
you've got the uh, the one that was released in the Jacqueline Fine starter deck, Azure Flame Clairvoyance, and what's the other one here? Um, Ineffable Truth, and then you've got the basic one, which is basically uh, Shriveling, Mists of Rillier, and either Sixth Sense or Rite of Seeking. I decided to go with just focusing on the uh, the spells that allow me to investigate using my willpower, since uh, my willpower is pretty bad, although I could definitely see Lily dipping into either the, uh, the fight options or the evade options, depending on uh, what role you see her playing in, uh, in a party, at least in multiplayer and solo. She really needs a way to discover clues, so that's why I'm focusing so heavily on those spells here. Guardian cards that take up arcane slots are few and far between. We've only got the level 0 Guardian Blade, uh, Flesh Ward, and that was released in the Nathaniel Cho starter deck and Rite of Sanctification from the Innsmouth Conspiracy Deluxe Box. Uh, who knows, maybe there is a, a Bless uh, Lily build out there, but uh, I don't think uh, Flesh Ward really does enough to, uh, to justify uh, a slot here. I don't think Lily's really going to be in too much trouble with her health and sanity, perhaps in some scenarios. And uh, Rite of Sanctification is interesting, but again, Lily is very probably going to be very limited in terms of, of uh, the number of Guardian, uh, uh, level 0 Guardian cards that she can use. And when you've got cards like Vicious Blow, as well as events that help her fight and whatnot, uh, uh, cards like Rite of Sanctification, I, I think, are going to be uh, not going to be able to make the cut here. But uh, who knows? That brings us to hand slots, and of course, the uh, the weapons that uh, Lily Chen uh, wants to use. Uh, again, we've got Enchanted Blade on this list. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, I think, I mean, thematically, anyway, I see Lily is is being very much using melee weapons or or using her hands uh, to strike. Uh, so a lot of the guns, uh, while they may be useful, I don't think they're very thematic for her. Um, so th I guess this is, you could say this is more of a thematic Lily build since I am trying to stick with the Dragon Pole and the Enchanted Blades. Uh, again, not a whole lot of, of cards that are gonna be all that interesting to Lily. Of course, Blackjack, Blessed Blade, Book of Psalms, not particularly interesting. Uh, survival knife, trench knife, of course, machete costing experience points if you're using the uh, the optional uh, list of taboos. One card that was kind of intriguing is boxing gloves. Again, it's not particularly thematic uh, in terms of uh, I have a hard time imagining my, uh, my kick-ass martial artists with boxing gloves on her hands. I guess you can uh, perhaps consider them to be hand wraps or something like that. But the the boxing gloves would give her plus one combat as well as a way to search for spirit event cards, many of which have fight actions on them. Uh, boxing gloves are a staple in Nathaniel Cho, and uh, I could definitely see them, uh, see players making a, a good case for them in Lily Chen, especially uh, once she's able to upgrade to boxing gloves, I think it's three? Uh, again, to free up some of those level zero um, guardian card slots, and then you're able to pick up a lot of those spirit events. I believe one two punch is a uh, level four is a spirit event, and uh, I can't remember if sweeping kick is or not. We'll have to take a look at that in a second. As far as uh, the mystic hand slots go, not a whole lot of interest. Uh, of interesting choices here. I know some players swear by ritual candles, but I think that uh, Lily is really going to be uh, the monster, excuse me, the monster fighter in the group, so uh, I don't really see those seeing a whole lot of play. Scroll of Prophecies is nice for card draw, but again, I mean, we're probably going to be using our hand slots for, for the uh, for either the uh, the dragon pole or uh, enchanted blades, uh, sign magic is a uh, is one that was brought up in the comments of the Edge of the Earth expansion. And while it does give you another uh, another arcane slot, you have to sacrifice a hand slot to do it. So 
uh, creates a bit of an awkward situation, especially if you're going to try to stick with the dragon pole. Uh, Sword Cane, uh, not really the deck for Sword Cane. It's, uh, it doesn't provide any, uh, uh, I don't think it has a damage bonus on it. And a uh, Chthonian Stone, man, I can't think of the last time I, I don't think I've ever built a deck with Chthonian Stone in it yet. So uh, if you want to pursue uh, sealing tech, uh, that's that's an option. But again, I think Lily's really going to be using her hands for weapons like the Dragon Pole and the Enchanted Blades. So a lot of the other cards are not going to be uh, all that, uh, aren't going to make the cut all that often in... Uh, if Lily is is the monster fighter, so I think that's uh, that's it for the slots I wanted to talk about. Let's uh, flip over to Octagon and uh, take a look at. Uh, we are set up and ready to go here, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna play against uh, Blood on the Altar, one of my favorite scenarios. Uh, we've got eight XP in the deck. I just want to check uh, sweeping kick here quickly, just to see if it is it is a it is a spirit event. So, card like boxing gloves might not be too bad in uh, in Lily. Of course, uh, I think the biggest question is what do you do at level zero? Uh, because uh, especially with the enchanted blade, it's worth noting if Lily's deck building uh, instruction or options are similar to those of Norman. The Enchanted Blade uh, Zero is a multi-class card. It's a Guardian and Mystic multi-class card. And multi-class cards in uh, in Norman count against both his slots if they uh, occupy, if it's a, say, a Seeker and Mystic multi-class card. That seek it counts against the Seeker uh, cards. So the same would be true of Enchanted uh, Blade. It would count against uh, Lily's... Um, Guardian slot. So if you want to go the Enchanted Blade route, you're already committing two uh, Guardian slots to that, which leaves you with only three cards to choose from. So, I mean, that's um, Vicious Blow is, is a strong contender for those slots. If you want to try the Dragon Pole, um, we've got to, you've got to uh, look at Bandolier there. So Gaining experience points in order to upgrade those Enchanted Blades quickly so that you can get uh, Enchanted Blade 3 from the Guardian card pool and then uh, fill in some of those other slots. Uh, uh, free up some of those level 0 Guardian slots for other cards is is interesting uh, or something that you're probably going to want to do. So let's uh, enough talk. Let's, uh, let's see how we do here. Uh, we'll shuffle up our deck. We want to, of course, shuffle up our weaknesses as well. So let's shuffle those up. Our weakness for this is going to, ooh, interesting, the Accursed Follower. So we're going we're gonna to have some curses around if we can't uh, take this guy out. Cursed Follower 222 across the board uh, spawns at the location furthest from you. He is aloof. And uh, at the end of the enemy phase, add a one curse token to the chaos bag. So uh, between promise of power and uh, the accursed follower, we're going to have a few curse tokens, I think, floating around. All right. Let's draw our opening hand. Of course, we've got, uh, we've got balance of body here. We've got plus one agility, so I should do that right now. So we're up to four agility already. So three willpower, two intellect, four combat, and four agility, and uh, we can take three different fight actions. So I think in our opening hand, we're going to be looking for, uh, obviously, some way of uh, gathering clues and some way of, of uh, fighting and uh, filling up those arcane slots. All right, let's, uh, let's draw our opening hand and see what we get. Um, not six cards, five cards. All right, so we got Clairvoyance, David Renfield, One Two Punch, Promise of Power, and Guts. Well, I like Clairvoyance and David Renfield. Uh, I think we'll get rid of the One Two Punch, the uh, Promise of Power, and the Guts. We'll mulligan those three and see if we can't pick up something, uh, something else here. We get a Sweeping Kick, a Perception, and a Vicious Blow. So... Meh. Didn't get a weapon. So that's what we'll be looking for. We'll we'll want to draw either an enchanted blade or a uh, or the dragon pole. 
but we have uh, we are able to fill one of our arcane slots right away so uh, that is good and it's nice that uh, even if we run out of charges on say clairvoyance we can uh, it still occupies that uh, that slot for uh, for the dragon pool. Now I did consider uh, picking up what was it prepared for the worst as one of my uh, one of my five level zero cards just to get a weapon, uh, but I decided I'd I'd risk it and uh, go with uh, two copies of the Enchanted Blade and two copies of Dragon Pool. All right, let's get this show on the road. Let's uh, we'll use two resources to play David. First off, uh, we actually are starting here at the Village Common. So we can resign here. Three Shroud Location, zero clues. We can resign. This is suicide. We're better off hiding out the night. Well, we're not going to do that. We are going to go out and uh, fight the good fight. So I think uh, David, we can uh, place a doom on him. Uh, we can exhaust David Renfield, place a doom on him, and gain a resource. And our willpower goes up to four, which is pretty, uh, which is better. Lily being one of the, the few mystics who doesn't have four or five willpower, she's uh, on the low end at three. Still average, but uh, a little bit lower. And uh, we can play clairvoyance right off the bat. So let's get that down. So we get three charges on that. Of course, clairvoyance, we spend a charge, investigate investigate using willpower instead of intellect if we succeed we can discover an additional clue uh, at this location so that will be good for those two shroud location or those uh, locations with more than one clue and let's uh where do we want to move uh we can go to bishop's brook osborne's general store or the schoolhouse it's been a while since I played this scenario, so I think we're going to head uh, schoolhouse. We can go from schoolhouse to house in the reeds, and then from house in the reeds to the church. And that's where we will end. So let's go the long way first. Let's move up to the schoolhouse. Schoolhouse, four shroud location, one clue. While you are in the schoolhouse, you cannot commit cards to skill tests. As a free triggered ability, uh, we can draw an encounter card from beneath schoolhouse group uh, limit once per turn. That could be tricky. We cannot commit skill cards to skill tests, which means we're basically going 4-4. Four, four. That's a pretty rough... Uh, it's a pretty rough into, uh, investigation action there, so maybe we'll keep on moving. We only have the three charges with clairvoyance, and we're not quite getting enough, uh, quite getting enough out of that to investigate. Again, uh, something like flashlight would probably be better, but uh, if you're going to play flashlight, then you're going to run into, you're going to have hand slot issues as well. So. Let's move on to, uh, we pick up one, two punch. Uh, did I shuffle this? Let me just check here. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. So we, we pick up a copy of one, two punch. So right now, if we trigger if we were to trigger balance of body, we could take two different fight. Uh, actually, we have three different fight actions in our hand. Uh, we've got sweeping kick and one, two punch, and then a basic fight action. So we just need the resources in order to do it. So we are primed to kill something. Uh, let's move on to the first mythos phase, two of six doom, thanks to David Renfield. And our encounter card is going to be on Wings of Darkness. Test four agility. If you fail, take one damage and one horror, then disengage from each Nikon enemy and move to a central location. So that's going to be the village common. We are 4v4, thanks to the balance of body. 
and uh, we're not going to commit anything to this. We don't have any cards that have agility skill icons. We get a minus one, so we end up taking a damage and a horror and getting sent back to the village common. So not particularly good. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the investigation phase. We'll get our three actions back, and um, we we'll get our David bucks first off because that will be important. Uh, let's. I think the schoolhouse is a bit out of our league at the moment. Uh, let's go to Bishop's Brook. Uh, three shroud location with two clues. Uh, if there is an investigator at Bishop's Brook, other investigators cannot enter it. Uh, again, if there are no clues there, we get to uh, uh, look at the card beneath it. Again, we're trying to find the, uh, the hidden chamber and the key so we can go and uh, beat up uh, Silas Bishop. Uh, so, the clairvoyance would give us, um, we could actually discover both clues here if we succeed. Um, but again, yeah, man, the uh, Lily's lack of uh, her below average intellect and her average willpower are not a particularly good combination for discovering clues, it would seem. Let's uh, take an action. We will spend a charge on clairvoyance and attempt to uh, to gather this clue. We're going to go 4v3. Chaos bag gives us a minus 2, so that is a failure. Let's give it one more try and see if we get something better. Skull is a minus 1. Uh, for each location in play with no encounter cards. That is a minus one currently. So we do discover this clue. Uh, we do succeed, and we do get to discover two clues because, uh, because of uh, because of clairvoyance. So let's grab those two clues. And I think we'll wait to trigger uh, use the free triggered ability. I don't want to use it as my last action, just in case there's an enemy. We get another copy of one two punch. So we're man, we're we between two copies of one two punch, a sweeping kick, and a vicious blow, uh, Lily is uh is uh just waiting for something to come out so she can kill it. We go to the mythos phase, it is turn three and our encounter card this round is eager for death test two willpower increase the skill difficulty by one for each damage on you we have taken one damage so we are going 4v3 chaos bag oh chaos bag throws us a minus four so we do fail that and we take uh, two horror so Lily is uh, getting pummeled here in the uh, opening rounds of this uh, of this scenario. All right, we go to the investigation phase of turn three. Let's use the free triggered ability on uh, on Bishop's Brook. Uh, we get an ancient evils, so we get another doom. So four of six doom already. And let's get our David bucks. We need those. Now from Bishop's Brook, we can move to Osborne's General Store. That is our only option. Man, we're, we're good at fighting, but not doing much else at the moment. So let's go to Osborne's. This, uh, this Osborne's, you cannot gain resources while you are in Osborne's general store. So that is uh, a little annoying. We cannot use... Uh, can't use David here either, but it's only a two-shroud location. 
Uh, I think we will investigate the regular way. We won't use uh, clairvoyance here. So let's take an action. Let's commit the perception to the skill test. That puts us at 4v2. Chaos bag throws us a minus one, so we do succeed and we get a card out of the deal. And we draw, of course, we draw Lily's weakness. So we must either choose to flip a discipline card you control to its broken side, it cannot flip back this round, or we take one damage and one horror. So I think we flip this. Uh, so after the round ends, if no enemies uh, were at the same location as you at any point this round, we can flip uh, balance a body back. So we'll have to wait a turn. We're going to have to wait a whole turn in order to do that. And we can't have any enemies with us next turn if we want to flip back. So, All right, well, we've got one action remaining. And let's uh, flip this card over. We have found the key. We have found the key to the chamber. So we are. Uh, we have found the first part of the uh, of the two we need. Uh, we need the key and the hidden chamber, and then we can uh, bring on Silas. All right. And of course we are at, uh, actually we have one action left, so we can move out of here so we can continue to generate resources. So let's get out of this, this place. And uh, can we move? Uh, uh, yes, we can do that. Okay. So, uh, we can unlock Lily. So we will go down to... Uh, oh, we drew another clairvoyance. Okay, well that's good. We're going to need that because we've only got one, uh, one charge left on the other one. And I suspect the schoolhouse is a, is a rough... Uh, is rough for Lily, so... All right, well we can't... Uh, we cannot flip discipline this turn. We can't flip our discipline back this turn, so we're going to have to go... Um, we're going to have to wait on that. So uh, we are on turn four. Uh, five of six doom. We Well, there's another ancient evil, so that is going to advance us. So we lose one of our friends. If there are three or more potential sacrifices, uh, we are playing standalone, so there are five sacrifices. We choose one and place it beneath the agenda. So let's find our sacrifices. They are here. And this one was sacrificed. So when you're playing in standalone mode on this uh, particular scenario, your goal is to try to uh, beat this with as few sacrifices as possible so uh, all right we are on agenda two the old one's hunger uh, doom threshold of six all right well we're going to exhaust uh exhaust david to get our resource and another doom okay well I'm really not liking this uh, schoolhouse issue. Uh, four shroud is rough. So I think we're gonna go now. House in the reeds. There's a pretty big chance that we're gonna end up with a uh, with a night gaunt out of the deal. So that is something worth keeping in mind. I don't think the night gaunt spawns there though. It spawns somewhere else. Uh, yeah, again, you know, when I was building this Lily Chen deck, you know, cards like Evidence or um, Scene of the Crime, all those great Guardian cards that you can use to to cheat clues. And when you only get five Guardian cards, if, uh, if that is indeed what her deck building restrictions are, it's going to be... Uh... So far, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. They, 
yeah that four that four willpower uh, you know if you're if you're accustomed to playing mystics with uh with five willpower and uh, using those uh those spells to investigate it's a lot easier all right well we move to the house in the reeds while while you are in house of the reeds you cannot play events oh we didn't get the uh we did not draw the uh the one with the night gaunt interesting but it is a one shroud a two shroud location with one clue so let's use our last uh, clairvoyance charge here to go 4v2. Chaos bag gives us a minus two, so we grab this clue. And we have one action remaining. Do we flip this over? Or do we play another clairvoyance? Um, playing another clairvoyance fills up our arcane slot, but we would still need to get. You're still looking for the blasted, uh, for the blasted uh, dragon pole or a weapon. I don't think we're going to flip this. Um, flip this card as a free triggered ability simply because um, whooper wills are in this. Uh, there are lots of enemies in this particular uh, scenario. And I would like to flip bo uh, balance of body back. So uh, I think what I will do instead is play my other copy of Clairvoyance. I'll spend the four resources to do that. Uh, again, very happy that I have uh, David on the field um, because he is really, he's generating a pile of resources for us to enable us to play some of these expensive assets. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll go to the end of the round and we will be able to flip over. Uh, we draw an overpower. Man, we, uh, something attacks us. We are going to destroy it. Um, end of the round, we could flip balance of body back over. So we have... We can trigger Balance of Body. We've got one copy of One-Two Punch, one copy of Sweeping Kick, and then a basic fight action. So we can trigger three basic fight, three fight actions. And because One-Two Punch gives us two, we could theoretically get four attacks uh, by triggering uh, Balance of Body. So that's pretty, uh, pretty nice. Perhaps if this is the... Uh, if the uh, hidden chamber is in the house in the reeds, we can uh, smoke poor Silas, but we shall see. Two of six doom in play. It is turn five. Encounter card is going to be eager for death again. Uh, again, we have nothing to commit to this. We haven't drawn a guts. So we're going 4v2. Chaos bag throws us a minus three again. Uh, or it's 4v3, actually. We draw a minus 3, so we take 2 horror. Uh, man, we are getting hit hard with the horror in this one. We're not... We're, 4v2 is... Uh, 4v2, we should be able to pass. 4v3 is a little trickier. We haven't seen any guts, though. Uh, so that's a bit of an issue that uh, perhaps we need to... Maybe, maybe Lily's the type of investigator that you would play. Something like... Uh, clarity of mind in it does fill up an arcane slot um, of course her other discipline uh, spirit of harmony uh, I would be able to take a direct damage right now and heal three horror which is pretty good so uh, perhaps spirit of harmony is a is a, a good choice for um, for Lily and it would actually boost her willpower too so between Spirit of Harmony and David Renfield, you could push Lily up to a five. Yeah, so maybe I was I was a little bit down on Spirit of Harmony just because it uh, that ability reminded me a lot of many of the abilities we've seen on Lily in past Arkham Horror Files games, um, sort of leaning into the the whole mysticism side and and uh, taking horror to heal damage and vice versa. But uh, boosting her willpower up to five with uh, Spirit of Harmony and David Renfield uh, is pretty good. Uh, perhaps that's the that's the way to go in solo. 
possibly. I don't know. I mean, we don't know what her her intellect discipline will do. So that's a, that's an interesting option. All right, uh, I'm lost. Uh, ah, yes, we we drew eager for death. Okay, well, we get our three actions back. All right. Um, let's use our first uh, free tr uh, free triggered ability to flip over this card. It is a rotting remains. Uh oh. Uh oh. That could be bad. Four v four v three. Ooh, we could be dead. Oh, we get a minus one. We pass. Whew, that was close. Could have uh, could have killed us right then and there. All right. Well, uh, we haven't played any events. Good. All right. Let's get our David Bucks. So we've got four resources. David's doing his job. Keeping us alive again. Yeah, man, Spirit of Harmony isn't looking too bad right about now. Uh, to add that uh, extra willpower would be uh, very helpful, especially uh, using cards like Clairvoyance to investigate. Let's move on to the Congregational Church. We're still looking for the... Um, for the hidden chamber of course it's probably going to be at the schoolhouse which is going to be a nightmare for us to investigate uh after congregational church is revealed searching counter deck and discard pile for humanoid enemy and spawn it at the village commons shuffle the encounter deck so we have to go find ourselves a uh find ourselves a humanoid i think there is only we're not uh we don't have the uh Ooh, Night Gaunt was coming up next. But, uh... Ooh, David could get kidnapped, too. That's kind of fun. Uh, I think there is only one humanoid in this deck, and that is the, uh... This dude here. The Servant of Many Mouths. Three fight, two health, one, e uh, one evade. Spawn, empty location. He has retaliate, hits for two damage. Uh, after you defeat... Servant of Many Mouths, discover one clue at any location. Well, that servant is dead uh, if we need to get that schoolhouse. He is our ticket to... Uh... The servant is our ticket to grabbing that clue at the schoolhouse if that is where the hidden chamber is. So uh, that is interesting. All right, we need to investigate here. Let's investigate using clairvoyance. We are going 4v1. I like those odds. Of course, we draw a on auto fail. Let's try again. We get a minus two, so we do grab this clue. All right, we're doing pretty well on the clue, uh, the clue side of things. Uh, we just need to find the, uh, the hidden chamber and then I think we can probably kill Silas in one turn, if necessary. Between two regular attacks and three attacks from uh, Balance of Body, I think Lily is in, in a good position to, to wipe the floor with him. I'm going to wait, though. I don't want an enemy uh, right now. Uh, so let's go upkeep. We draw a promise of power. That's awfully nice. That's a willpower check right there. That's four, four icons for a willpower check if necessary. We go... Uh, I don't think I got my David Bucks this turn. But uh, I probably forgot because I was too worried about nearly dying. Oh, no, I did. Oh, good. I did remember. All right. Uh, we are at three of six doom. Ah, uh, the whippoorwills. The whippoorwills have arrived. All right. Well... So, 
do we deal with the whippoorwills? I guess it depends whether this is the hidden chamber or not. Actually, if this is the hidden chamber, we don't care about the whippoorwills because we will not, uh, we won't be, wor we won't be worried about them. Let's use our free triggered ability. It is not. It is not the hidden chamber. It is an on wings of darkness. Um. Interesting. That would send us right into the loving arms of the servant of many mouths. Uh, and we need to kill him. But we will take a damage and a horror if we fail this. I guess David could die now. I think David could die if we fail this. So during the skill test, I'm going to exhaust David to gain a resource. We'll make the skill test. We're going 4v4. Not great odds. We get a minus one, so we fail. So we're going to take a damage and a horror. David, unfortunately, isn't going to survive that. Um, and we get sent back to the central location and then engage the uh, Servant of Many Mouths. So actually, that works out okay for us. Uh, we now know the hidden chamber is under the schoolhouse, but by killing this Servant of Many Mouths, we can gain the clue at the, the schoolhouse and save ourselves a lot of heartache trying to investigate there. Now, I don't really want to Man, I'm I'm annoyed I haven't seen the Dragon Pole or an Enchanted Blade this turn this game. I guess we could go uh we could play a one two punch. We've got two. I don't want to trigger balance of body yet uh, because we'd have to wait two rounds to use it. Um, so we're going to get plus one for this attack. We could throw an overpower to this largely because... Um, I think we throw an overpower to this. So we're going to go four, five, six, seven, seven v three. Chaos Bank throws us a minus one. So we hit him for one damage. Uh, we hit this dude for one damage, and then we get a second attack with one two punch. Uh, I didn't pay for it. Let's do that. Uh, we draw a card. There's an enchanted blade. Okay, finally. Um, and we get to fight it again. This time we get plus two combat. So we're at four, five, six. 6v3. Sure. We get a minus 2. So we do kill the servant. After, we de de after defeating the servant, we discover a clue at any location. So we grab this clue at the uh, schoolhouse. Um, so that was our first action. Let's move up to the schoolhouse. Let's uh, trigger the free triggered ability there. We know it's the hidden chamber. So let's bring that to front. And so when investigators enter the hidden chamber advance, um, uh, 
so we attach the key to the hidden chamber now. If the hidden chamber is connected to your location, attach the key to the hidden chamber. So we'll attach the key to the chamber to the hidden chamber. And so the door is open. Once we enter the hidden chamber, we will trigger the end game. So I'm going to use my last action to play. Um, the enchanted blade. And that's going to be it. So Enchanted Blade 3, you get plus 2 combat for this attack. If you succeed, you may spend a charge to empower the blade to deal plus 1 damage. If the blade is empowered and this attack defeats an enemy, draw 1 card and heal 1 horror. Well, that will certainly help us. Uh, we go to uh, Enemy Phase, the Whipper Wills move. Upkeep, we draw and uncage the soul. A little late for that, but it's two, uh, two uh, willpower skill icons, which is very nice. And we go to uh, three of six doom. Oh, we need to get rid of an arcane slot here. So the used clairvoyance will go away. And... Uh, we're drawing an, an encounter card, which is Kidnapped. Uh, test four willpower or four agility. If you fail, add an ally's asset you control to the pool of potential sacrifices. Then attach Kidnapped to the current agenda. If you have no ally asset, take two damage and discard Kidnapped instead. So uh, I really don't care about this. I'm going to take two, probably just take two damage. Um... I don't think any of these uh, special tokens are going to make any difference. So we'll just draw and we get an elder sign. Well, look at that. We get plus two and we could flip a broken uh, discipline back, but uh, so nothing happens. We easily deal with that. All right, let's kill Silas. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see if Lily has what it takes. Uh, so we are going to enter the hidden chamber. Let's move the hidden chamber down here. It's a little neater. So Lily zooms down to the hidden chamber as an action. Uh, so reveal each unrevealed location. I believe all the locations have been revealed. Uh, move all clues in play, including those on each investigator, to the hidden chamber. So we, uh, there are six clues on the hidden chamber. Uh, we're not going to be discovering all the clues here, though. We don't care about that. And we spawn Silas at the Hidden Chamber. Where did I put Silas? Is he in here? I believe he is in here. There he is. All right, Silas has six health. All right. Six health. He's massive, he can't make attacks of opportunity. Can we kill him in one round? This is what Lily was meant to do, so let's give it a, sh a shot here. So, uh, we've got three attacks with balance of body. We could take one attack with enchanted blade. Or do we just swing away with uh, balance of body right off the bat? I think we just go with balance of body right off the bat, don't we? Uh, what do we have though? We'd have one, we need three different attacks. We would get one with the enchanted blade 
two more with one two punch. And we're one resource short of a third, so we'd have to just go with the regular attack. All right, fair enough. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Uh, so let's trigger balance of body. So one at a time, we, we take three attack actions. So, uh, let's do the first one with the enchanted blade. So we get plus two for this attack. So we're going six V three. Let's go 7v3 with the Vicious Blow. And Chaos Bag says Cultist. That is a minus two. And so we hit. Uh, so this is our second action. So we deal. So if you succeed, we may spend a charge, which we will, uh, to empower the blade, dealing plus one damage for this attack. Uh, if this blade is empowered and the attack defeats an enemy. Okay, so we just deal plus one damage. So we deal uh, one, two, three damage to Silas. With our first attack of the balance of body round. Second attack. Uh, do we want to go with a sweeping kick? I kind of want to play sweeping kick, actually. We could go sweeping kick or one-two punch. We've played the one-two punch already. Sweeping kick would be kind of fun. Uh, we deal two damage to him, and then we'd have one more attack, which we could just do as a basic attack. Uh, so we'll do that. Let's play Sweeping Kick for one resource as our second attack. Second fight action, we get to add our Agility Skill Modifier to this attack. So we go to 8v3. Chaos Bag says Skull. That is a minus 4. Uh, so we pass. So we deal plus one damage, and if we succeed, we automatically evade him. So we deal another two damage, and we automatically evade Silas. So Lily comes in, stabs him with the enchanted blade, hits him with a kick, and then we're going to finish him off with a regular shot to the face. We'll throw a, 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 a promise of power against that as uh, I think that should be enough. Uh, we'll throw a we'll throw a one two punch against him as well. Uh, we had we moved in and we triggered so we have one action left. Uh, if necessary, if we don't kill him with this one, we can take another swipe at him with the uh, enchanted blade. Uh, so this time we are going four plus four is eight nine v three and we have to add a. Um, I, uh, we have to add a curse token to the bag, uh, which is, I believe, control two, there we go. So there's one curse token in the bag, but we are attacking at uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chaos bag gives us a tablet, that's a minus two. If you were in the hidden chamber, reveal another token. Well, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. Draw. Uh, draw an additional token. We get a minus three for a total of minus five. Uh, so we were at nine. One, two, three, four, five. Plus four is nine. Minus five is four which is enough to kill Silas. 
All right. So balance of body does the trick. And then of course we flip this over because we, uh, I did make that mistake in the, uh, in my uh, preview video for uh, Lily. I thought you flipped balance of body over immediately, which would allow you to draw a, an elder sign token and flip it back and then use it again. But fortunately the designers thought of everything and you can't do that. Uh, you can, however, uh, use it twice in one turn if you uh, flip uh, balance, if you trigger balance of the body as your first action and then as your second action you attack regularly if you happen to draw get very lucky and draw an elder sign uh, during that attack you could uh, flip or, or attack or any any skill test basically whatever skill test you take if you draw an elder sign that would allow you to flip balance the body back and then take three more attacks so not broken by any stretch of the imagination. But we do kill Silas, and I believe that's uh, if Silas Bishop is defeated, we get R1. So we, uh, we finish off uh, Silas with, uh, with balance of body. Uh, uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting to, uh, to play around a little bit with Lily. I think that uh, based on this uh, based on this very limited information that we have, I mean, we don't even know what her deck building restrictions are. We're we're guessing, I think, with a reasonable amount of certainty that she'll be limited to five uh, level zero guardian cards. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Spirit of Harmony is a better choice in solo for that plus one willpower. Uh, combine it with uh, Renfield, you get her up to plus. Uh, she gets up to five, and that makes her pretty decent. Um, combine that with uh, with the dragon pole. Uh, I think you'd be you'd be in pretty good shape. Uh, of course, we don't know what her intellect ability is uh, on her discipline. That would boost her up to three intellect, which that alone is not particularly good. So the uh, the intellect discipline would have to have a pretty pretty good ability on it to uh to justify that so right now i'm kind of leaning towards uh spirit of harmony in solo i mean balance of body is fun the ability to take three attacks for one action is <laughs> is uh i think what martial artist uh, fans have dreamed of uh but uh it is somewhat limited uh, in that you know she Lily gets those three attacks and then, of course, has to wait uh, two rounds before she can use it again. So uh, if a typical scenario, this scenario ended on turn seven, but typically scenarios run, you know, 10, 12 turns, Lily's not going to be able to trigger that all that often. So I think balance of body may be more for the multiplayer uh, Lily builds where she's just focused on killing enemies. I don't think the plus one agility is particularly helpful in solo. Um, I think the the willpower that you get from Spirit of Harmony would probably be much better. Although I find Spirit of Harmony's ability much less interesting, just healing damage and horror is not particularly interesting to me. But I think in solo, having that extra willpower would be helpful. Now we did take a lot of horror in this particular scenario, uh, which is somewhat unusual i think we we got uh i mean lily's got a four so we weren't passing we didn't have that five willpower which really helps us ace willpower skill tests which is why i kind of lean towards spirit of harmony a little bit more here and uh so yeah i think it's a it's an interesting thought experiment i would uh, i would take the conclusions here with a big grain of salt there's a lot of unknowns still, and we really don't know what Lily, uh, what other cards in the expansion, uh, the Investigator expansion for Edge of the Earth, are going to do. So I'm sure there will be lots of other fun toys that uh, that Lily can use. Mostly, usually, uh, that between the Deluxe expansion and a cycle worth of cards, you get a lot of interesting toys for each of the Investigators in the Deluxe box, and I expect this to be no different with Lily. So. 
So yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that I that I would sort of lean right now towards Spirit of Harmony in in uh, solo as opposed to Balance of Body, but I really wanted to give Balance of Body a try. So we did almost die, but I mean we didn't see guts, we didn't see an uncage the soul till later. Uh, in terms of um, weapons, a little disappointed I didn't see the dragon pole. I would have liked to have played around a little bit with that. We did have the two clairvoyants out on the table, which would have helped us. Uh, that would have been plus two combat and plus one damage, which would have been pretty good. And But the enchanted blade, uh, two, uh, three, certainly uh, helped out. I, I don't think, you know, based, this build was pretty speculative already, and I'm not too sure uh, I would bother with going, say, uh, enchant, trying to mix the Enchanted Blade and Dragon Pull. It seems a little bit awkward, especially if you have to play Bandolier, and you're only going to, I mean, Bandolier 0 especially. Bandolier 2 is actually, is it 2 or 3? Bandolier 2 gives you an additional willpower if you're wielding a two-handed weapon. So that would be very nice for uh, for Lily. Um, so I'm not too sure going uh, double Enchanted Blade, double Dragon Pull is a particularly elegant way of playing, especially if you need to work uh, Bandolier into the mix. I think it gets much easier to go that way uh, when you have some experience points so you're not committing a lot of your level zero guardian cards to trying to work a like a, a level zero enchanted blade there's two right there there's two guardian slots taken um, if you go with level zero bandolier there's two more taken that leaves you with one slot so then you're not playing things like one two punch you're not playing you're playing one copy of vicious blow i don't know can you play a, a monster fighter with without vicious blow? It seems kind of crazy to me, but uh, anyway, I have talked too much. I have talked at length, and uh, but a fun game, fun to uh, fun to take Lily out for a spin, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this, and uh, I look forward to seeing what other Lily builds uh, you all come up with once uh, Edge of the Earth expansion, uh, the Investigator expansion, is released. Of course, we haven't, uh, we have not seen uh, any word from FFG yet about a release date, and uh, if the rumors of a revised core set are true, I expect that to come out. Uh, I heard rumors September-ish, which would put the uh, edge of the Earth probably into October or no, or even November. So we shall see. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this episode. This uh, this little bit of theory crafting with Lily Chen. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a great deal. And I'll be back with more Great Harkham Horror LCG content. Until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.